ladies and gentlemen, my name is Anton, and I will lead today's webinar about new features of Smart PTT software implemented in latest 8.6 release. You can ask any questions you have on question step. I will answer all the questions after the webinar. If you have a microphone, you have an option to raise your hand with a special button, and I will unmute you. You will be able to ask your question verbally online, and I will answer it. Here is a short description what is Smart PTT software. Smart PTT is a highly customizable application and comes in several variants that provide different set of functionality for different systems. Interface with radio system can be done via control stations or via IP connection to monoturbo repeaters. Dispatcher software gives opportunity to control and log the flow of data and voice in radio network, request location of subscribers and monitor the state of repeaters. Also, Smart PTT gives a set of software tools such as web client and file transfer software, which increase radio network usability and functionality. Smart PTT has functionality that allows it to connect to PBX and gives subscribers the ability to use PBX interconnection from radio network as well. Contents of today's webinar are listed on this slide. This release comes with interface changes, new monitoring reports, multi-floor building support, bridging with four-wire voice systems, and more. I will describe all of these features in more details. Subscriber panel on the left is redesigned and is now presented as three independent tabs. For subscriber list, sound spectrum and call log. Each of them can be positioned independently to maximize user interface customization possibilities. Any panel can be opened individually, including an option to be opened as a window on a separate screen, allowing for portrait orientation screens to fit more subscribers or call log entries on the screen simultaneously. Subscriber list was redesigned. Online and offline subscribers are shown in, on, in one list with filtering instead of two separate lists. Dispatcher will see an online subscriber in a tree-like structure under each slot or control station in the system. Offline subscribers are shown in gray at the bottom of the list. Quick search option is added to the list. Dispatcher can quickly find radio, control station or channel by typing its name or ID of needed subscriber. Status filter is also available here to leave on the list only the subscribers with specific status. Buttons at the top of the list can be used to change the representation of the list, show groups, online subscribers and offline subscribers respectively. System monitoring tab is now split into four independent tabs, so administrator can have all of them at a glance. Each of these tabs can be moved around interface as you like. When upgrading from an older version, all four tabs will be opened in the same place where old monitoring tab was opened. Dispatcher is no longer limited with only one tab containing all the information. All tabs can be taken out of interface and placed on separate screens to provide all available information simultaneously. Monitoring analytics report can now be made for a whole network, one site, individual repeater and individual subscriber. It is possible to have an exact load caused by individual subscriber on specific repeater. You can see the percentage of different types of data transmitted on specific repeater, site, or by specific subscriber. You can see the loading cost by this subscriber per day and voice to data percentage. System load can now be viewed using a special type of report, system usage report. It allows users to get detailed data about amount of different types of radio transmissions in the network. You will be able to see the load of, on, on the system to see if some equipment is not used or to decide on increasing system's capacity due to overload. It can be also used for billing in case of system is used as a rental service. It will clearly show usage by different subscribers and it will be possible to get such details for each system. Radio Server Configurator can automatically gather and save current network topology for easier system management. These functions allow you to build a network map in a split second and set up notifications just as fast. Radio Server will automatically fill in addresses, names and site data for all repeaters currently connected to the network. 
You can later update the topology after adding more repeaters to the system. Hybrid systems now include support of phone calls over control stations. Each group in a hybrid system requires a dedicated control station to work. At least one additional control station is required for private voice calls. So it is possible to establish one call for each group, as each group has a control station. It is also possible to make private phone calls if control station is specified for private calls. Phone interconnection is supported based on interruptions. It will be possible to make outgoing calls via TMS or by using DTMF call method. Voice is transmitted over control stations without NI. It does not require phone interconnection license on repeaters or activation of phone calls over NAI function on repeater. The amount of simultaneous phone calls in hybrid system is limited by number of available control stations. Another big expansion of functionality is four-wire, also known as ears and mouth systems connectivity. Four-wire interface provides option of transforming analog voice stream into VoIP SIP voice stream. SmartPT can integrate the four-wire interface into radio networks through Cisco equipment. It was tested on Cisco uh, 2900 series router. It provides an option to connect to analog radio systems and other radio systems that supports E and M interface. Calls in those systems could be monitored by dispatcher and bridged into group calls in MotoTurbo system, so subscribers from each network could hear each other. This interface currently doesn't support any signaling, but there are several enhancements planned in future releases. Please note that each four-wire system will require a separate license for connection. Indoor positioning now allows you to make a multi-floor building plan and watch your subscribers going around the building and easily switching between different floors. Multi-floor building plans can be created from within SmartPTT and can contain a mixture of two-dimensional and three-dimensional maps of different floors. Indoor beacons are placed via SmartPTT interface and it is possible to see subscribers registered to specific beacons on the floor plan. When created, all the maps along with their respective indoor beacons placement will be saved on the archive file, which can be transferred elsewhere to other dispatcher and be opened there with ease. You will not need to keep all pictures and three-dimensional drawing files, all of them will be saved inside the building plan archive. All radio subscribers now can have their online and offline status updated based on their activity in the system. It allows better integration of radios which do not support registration system and can help to further reduce the traffic on the system, preventing it from overload. Subscriber will be considered online after any activity on the network. It will go offline after an activity timeout will expire, and radio will not respond to radio check. These options allow usage of radios that are not able to use uh, automatic registration system for some reason. Radio server now provides additional type of rule, which can be used to start specific automation on the network when dispatcher connects or disconnects from server. Radio subscribers can be notified about dispatcher presence, voice notification can be played over the network, and sound warning can be played through the speaker connected to the radio server. Subscriber telemetry settings now include the option to auto-check telemetry pin status periodically. It will be possible to monitor the state of telemetry on an automated basis, allowing more strict control over telemetry signals in the network. The point behind this feature is simple. Mototurbo radios send the update on telemetry status pin change, but it is possible to specify only one way of change, for example, low to high. When pin status changes from low to high, radio will automatically send the telemetry signal. But when it changes from high back to low, no signal will be sent. It is a restriction of mototurbo radios and it cannot be overridden from CPS settings. When we enable the auto-check, SmartPT will periodically send a request on pin status to radio. And if status has changed from high to low, it will be depicted in SmartPTT interface. 
This way, dispatcher will receive status update on each actual change, not only on change programmed in CPS. Be warned, though, that the more frequent you will set the periodic check interval, the more load you will put on your radio system. Visit our website smartptc.com to find out more information about SmartPTT software. Follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel user SmartPTT. If you have any questions, feel free to send email to us on info at smartptt.com or submit your request via submit form on support portal support.smartptt.com. Thank you for your attention.